Hello, I'm with one more experiment that is a simple pendulum. Here it is, a nice bob of certain mass and its rigid support fixed with a string of certain length. The aim of this experiment is just to find out the effective length of the secant pendulum as well as to draw the graph length of the string versus the square of the time period and how we have to just know how L and V square just relate each other. So the key formula for this experiment is just is equal to 2 pi into square root of L by G which is nothing but the time period of oscillation of the simple pendulum which just depend on length of the string and G is a gravitational acceleration. So when I square the equation T square is equal to 4 pi square L by G and I can say that T square is linearly related with length of the pendulum that's why you get a straight line when you draw L versus T square. That we can verify. Anyway, this is a bob of certain mass, the spherical shape as well. So, if I find out the radius, I have already found it is actually one centimeter radius. And now we have to go for the different lengths, corresponding time period we have to note down. So, length of the string from the top of the bob to the point of suspension. Top of the bob is this one, from here to the point of suspension, this length has to be fixed. For example, for the first trial, it is actually 79 centimeter. So, right, written in terms of centimeter. So, 79 from the point of suspension to the top of the bob. This has to be 79, which is already set. So, now if you add up the radius, there is much from, uh, nothing but from the middle, the radius, if you add to the length, whatever you set, then you will get the effective length. So, it is 1 centimeter plus 79, both are in centimeter, it is just 80 centimeter. So now what I have to do is, you have to find out what is the time period for one oscillation and if we go for only one oscillation, we may get more error as well as like if we go on for only one trail, there is a more possibility of getting error. So that's why we go for 10 oscillations as well as we go for 2 trails so that we can minimize the amount of error we get in the experiment. So there is a time clock which will measure, which we can measure the time. I'm just going to give a small oscillation. This is absolutely fine. Small oscillation. I can start my clock at any time. I'm making sure that I would be starting from the extreme end, one of the extreme ends, which would be very easy to count on, right? So from the, this extreme end, I start. When it comes back to the same position, I can say that one time period or one oscillation is done. So I have to count what is the time taken for 10 oscillations. I'll just, I'll just start doing it. So let me just give a, yeah, this is fine. So I'll start from here. Start. One oscillation, two oscillations, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This shows it's 15 seconds. The so time taken for 10 oscillation is just 15 seconds. So it would be written over here because it's a for 79 centimeter. First trial. One more trial I have to do again for the 10 trials. It may be around 15.5, for example. They have to take down the mean of these two. That should be written here. So just add up two and divide by two. You'll get the mean in terms of seconds again. So this is actually time taken for 10 oscillation. If you want to know what is the time taken for only one oscillation, that is what you wanted. There is nothing but time period definition. You have to divide by 10. So you will get time in terms of seconds. If you divide by 10, this one, you will get obviously the time period for one oscillation. So anyway, we have to draw the graph to square versus L. We need to square that. That's done. That can be done there. Square the value. Next. You just change the length from the point of suspension to the top of the bob. You just adjust the length, change, increase the length for 10 centimeters, so you get 89 centimeters. Add the radius, you get 9 centimeters. Again, if you do two more tries for 10 oscillation, what is the time taken for 10 oscillation? Then take the mean, you write here, divide by 10, you write here, and square it right here. Similarly, you can do for 99 centimeters. 109 centimeter, 119 centimeter. You can go for five trails. You can have tabulation of values. One side, the effective length, the capital L, 
corresponding t square, that is square of the time period. So you can plot the graph here along x axis that we take effective no, this effective length, and along y axis you just have to take the square of the time period. Obviously, you will get a straight line. The equation itself tells the same thing. There is a linear relationship. So once you get the straight line, you write the scale, and after that, you need to find out what is the effective length of secant pendulum. The secant pendulum is something like the time period is nothing but two seconds. It is designed in such a way that for one meter length of the string, you would get the time period as two seconds. No, irrespective of masses, it is independent of the mass. So if you set one centimeter, it is a substitute over D. This is, you keep it at one centimeter, I'm sorry, one meter actually. This is actually G9.8, you will get T is exactly as two seconds. So effective pendulum, sequence pendulum, effective length is calculated for T is equal to two seconds. So T square will be equal to four seconds square. So Find out where exactly you have got 4 seconds square. Here it is along y axis t square. You draw a line which cuts to a straight line and draw a line which cuts to x axis. So, whatever the value it shows along the x axis, that is nothing but the length, because along the x axis I've taken length. So, this value is nothing but the effective length of the secant pendulum. That is what we should find out. So, thank you for watching this.